next on Martha. Emerald is here, and we're cooking Thanksgiving dinner together. So join us for Emerald's own roasted turkey breast with brown butter and sage stuffing. This is a very, very classic dressing that we do at the holiday times. Doesn't that sound good? It's the perfect meal for a more intimate holiday gathering. Plus, they are the men and women who work so hard to put food on our tables. We're giving special thanks to our farmers across America. Next on Martha. With Thanksgiving just two days away, Emerald Lagasse is here to share a special Thanksgiving meal that he created especially for us. Now, you've also been on a competitor, uh, competitor um, uh, network doing turkey every single day. That's right. Um, yeah, it's, and it's been fantastic. I started fantastic. Friday. I, I did turkeys and explained to people the difference between free range and heritage. You know, everybody's confused about oh, that. Oh, yeah. And how, how much turkey? And, and organic. inorganic. And, and then uh, we made cranberry sauce and gravy. And then yesterday we did dressings and uh, in the soup. And today we did sides. But I'm here today with you. We're doing turkey. I'm excited. We're doing turkey. You know, we're going to do... A whole menu. The whole menu. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is, when you and I talked about this, we, we talked about bringing it down instead of making it big. So there's only two or three of you. So we're going to just use the turkey breast today. And you can treat it the same way. We're going to, we're going to make a brine. Can you buy just that? I mean, you can I have buy a, just that. I, you know, I raise my own turkey, so I, I don't... I, I'm I, jealous. I, I, I know. I haven't been shopping for turkeys this year. So you can just buy the whole turkey breast like that. Yes, it's amazing. Deconstructed. It's deconstructed. So no wings, yep. Yep. No, legs, no legs. Or you can, you can buy, buy it with thing. it. But, uh, or you could buy a smaller, a smaller bird. Um, but... This is enough for, you know, for a good four people and leftovers. What you want to do, folks, is the average is one pound of turkey per person. But I like leftovers, so use one and a half pounds per person. Well, yeah, I want turkey sandwiches. Absolutely. The I next want, day. I want turkey pickings. With cold I like to, cranberries. I like to go oh, in the refrigerator after, you know, in the night and just pull <laughs> off some. And guess who else likes it? Who? Sharky and Francesca. <laughs> so let's get started. All right. We have the turkey breast, and you're a briner. Yes. Well, listen, okay. you don't have to brine. You could just do crushed salt and pepper. Uh, sea a dry salt, rub, like a dry, a dry rub? rub you could do yeah. as well. We did that last week. Yep. And or you could delicious. do this brine, and okay. you, you start with like a gallon of water. Okay. Um, and then we have uh, lemon that we'll squeeze in here. Okay. Uh, about three quarters of a cup of kosher salt, which Ooh, really? makes the oh, brine. Okay. Okay. It sounds like a lot, but you want it to penetrate. A cup of sugar. Yeah. So that's what you have the salt and sugar. And then um, aromatics, whatever you like. We All have this? a little bit of thyme. A whole bunch? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That much? Or? Yeah, that's great. Okay. And some parsley. And of course, you've got to have garlic cloves in there. So I kind of just smash them and put them in there like sort of whole like 12 that. 12 garlic cloves, everybody. Yep. And then um, an onion. A whole medium onion. And, and then we have a little bit of bay leaf, oh, which I, is important. I, like, I break them. Do you break them? I, I do. Yeah. I do. Okay. And then also peppercorns. I have a bay tree, and I use you fresh do? ones. Yeah. I used to have one. Yeah, they're beautiful. Oh, they're beautiful. They smell and so 16 incredible. Sixteen peppercorns. Count them out, <laughs> <laughs> or just just a nice like a quarter of a teaspoon. Right, just a pinch in there. So that's the brine. You bring that up to temperature to a boil. You turn it off. You let it cool down a little bit. Once it starts getting cool, as this is right now, then you take your bird, wash it really good. Well, you're a partial bird. Partial bird. You're deconstructed, poor deconstructed. bird. Deconstructed. <laughs> and you want to do this for at least 24 hours. Sometimes I cheat and I do it for now, 48 now, hours. Now, can you explain the brining and why we brine? Yes. Okay. Most, most turkeys, excuse me one second. Most turkeys, um, when you buy just a regular turkey at the store, they have a solution that they put on the turkey so that they don't really dry out when you, uh, when you, when you cook them. What happens, it's fantastic to brine a regular store-bought turkey, and that's what right now... Uh, economically is the best is the best buy but if you brine it what happens is it takes that out of there and it also penetrates the flavor so it's gonna it's gonna make the turkey nice and moist moisture and juicier and juicier and it really is molecular this is a molecular chemical reaction of the brine into the meat so it really does do something I did you a... read that this morning no I've been I know that you do I'm a chemist I'm sorry <laughs> I'm just an old chemist. Uh, I, I was going to be a chemist, but it really... I didn't know that. Oh, yes. But it what is... What was the word? Molecular. Molecular. 
Yes. Okay. Molecular. All right. Anyway, but it really is, and I and, and because I've been, you know, so many people ask about brining. This year is the year of the brined turkey. Yeah, you know, dry the, brine, wet brine. You're, you're right. Three day brine, one day brine. And a couple of years ago it was fried. Everybody yes. you talked to was frying oh, yeah. turkeys, yeah, right? Yeah, we made a fryer. We made a, a at Kmart. We made a great big <laughs> fryer, and it's good. Fried Very turkey good. is good. But this is better. This is All better. right. So here. We, but how long? How long? 24 hours, okay. I cheat 48 hours. Oh, you okay. Do. You make more. Okay. Yes. All right. Is it juicier after 48? I think so. Oh, okay. All right, so we got celery, about yep. a cup. This is the vegetables for our roaster because what folks don't know, two cups of onions and a cup of carrots. I have this incredible I've vertical ne I've roaster. I've never used this, and I am so excited about having one of these. Well, my, my partners at All Clad and I yep. came up with this, and you know where this idea came from? I originally did a beer can chicken. Where I took, I remember, I yes, remember on your a, TV program, a beer can, yep. and I used it. And so what we did is we created this vertical roaster. It has this little cylinder in here that you could put stock or wine uh, or whatever. And what we do now is we're going to take garlic and thyme and some sage. Oh, some sage. Okay, so now we're adding sage instead of parsley. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to toss this with a little butter. Okay. If you could just toss that for me, Martha. I will. And what I'm going to do is take a little so bit like of chicken broth. So is this like a little mirepoix for the bottom of the pan? That's or? exactly oh, right, because okay. what's going to happen, so I'm going to show you in a second. So now, a if you bed, put a them bed. right in here, yep. in the vertical roaster. Oh, what's in the middle? I put stock oh. in there. Oh, I didn't, I thought, that, oh, that is, that is, that so, holds liquid. So it holds liquid, oh, and I what's going to happen is I the steam. Seen this before. You want to put your oven on 400 degrees now, folks. I had one of those wire things like that that I did ducks on. Yes. But this is much better. Oh, this is so cool. And oh. then you, you take the turkey out of the brine, just give it a quick rinse. The vegetables are on the vertical roaster. Now, what we're going to do is just take the bird like this. Look at this. And it sits just like that, okay? 400 degrees. Now, here's another part. What we're going to do is we're going to take this oh, important. and we're going to just take the stock and this is going to make the pan sauce that we're going to make. So this is turkey stock or chicken? Roasted in the oven. People say, well, how long do you roast mm. it in the oven for? Folks, this is what I can tell you about the perfect turkey. If you don't want a dry turkey, get a meat thermometer. You want to take the turkey out at 155, 158 degrees. As it rests, Martha, as you know, it's going to continue to cook. Right. It's going to get at about 162. You're going to have a fantastic, fantastic, moist, I love delicious, so, juicy so, turkey. So we just put that right on the rack in the oven. Right in the oven. We can paint it with a little bit of oil or butter. Yeah. Oh, you don't, so You don't excited. rub the skin with butter? Yeah. 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 Okay. And then salt, a little pepper. Okay, what about that essence? Essence. Where's that going? I'm going to sprinkle it over there. When? Before right or after? Oh, right okay. <laughs> Bam, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you forgot to right. say that on Bam. the Bam, all right, there we go. <laughs> Emerald's going to finish cooking, and you're going to see what this looks like when we return. Stay with us. <laughs> Later, Emerald and Martha make nutty Brussels sprouts, the perfect Thanksgiving side dish. You don't want to miss it. Perfectly roasted turkey is out of the oven. Look what it looks like. What do you think, everybody? Doesn't that look really good? And that is, that's enough for four people. Absolutely. Yeah. And the vegetables, you see how they get nice oh, and caramelized delish. like that? Really delicious. Yes. So if you want to use the vegetables, uh, you'll have drippings in there. And if you want to use the vegetables, you can certainly for the sauce. I even sometimes would just add the vegetables with the pan drippings and use sort of a, a little um, hand mixer, uh, you know, a, a yeah. blender and use that. Or you can do this trick right here, a classic technique called a bourmonier, which is a, a roux not cooked. Uh, Martha's so got two flowers. teaspoons of flour with two teaspoons of butter, equal parts. How about tablespoons? Tablespoons is what I said, yes. Uh, um. <laughs> Just so you get the right <laughs> yeah, recipe. that's right. No, uh, that would be two tablespoons and two tablespoons. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the trick is, as you can see what Martha's doing, she's mixing that and pressing that flour this into the butter. This way you don't get lumps, right? Exactly. This, this, this avoids the lumps in your gravy. And if you see this here, you know, we took the pan drippings from the vertical roaster inside of a little sauce pot, 
and we're just sort of letting that yeah. evaporation See, go. See, this is really great. That's perfect. Yeah, Martha. because uh, you could do this with water, but but why not have butter? Right. You can have butter instead of water. I mean, come right. on. Right, come on. Yeah. Those farmers would agree with us. That's right. They are the ones. I was very impressed with them, by yeah. the way. Oh, later on in the show, we have some very interesting people here. Can I just use yes, that you for can. one sec? I'll do that for you. Okay. So you can, you can go on to the next thing. All right. What I'm going to do here is I have a little bit of butter. I'm going to start rendering down, which is to just crispen up some of my bacon. Now, is that a dark enough gravy for you? Um, well, you know, we did use a light broth. Yeah. Uh, you like it darker? Yeah. Do you like to roast the bones? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could do that option if you like, folks, okay? What Martha's saying is if you want a darker gravy, the only way that you're going to get that is by roasting the bones. Right. Okay? So you want to render the bacon first because if you do the onion first, you see the water in the onion is not going to get the bacon crispy. So what kind of bacon? Uh, just a good, just a, just a good apple smoke. Yeah, bacon. I okay. love that. Right. Okay. So you want to get that crispy, and then to that, what we're going to do once it is, is we're going to add a cup of onion and a half a cup of celery. Oh, so that's here. That's right there. Okay. And basically, that's what Martha has there. Mm, yeah. We want to add a little bit of, of course, a little salt and a little pepper. Any more butter? If it starts to stick, you can always add the butter. Okay. Now what you want to do is once that cooks like that about six or eight minutes, we're going to add shiitake mushrooms. That's these mushrooms right here that you might see at the store. The that stems are very, very, and these are a cultivated mushroom. This is not a wild mushroom. Now the stems are very, very, um, how do I want to say, Martha? They're flavorful, but, but they're, they're not, tough. they're tough. Yeah, save right. that for the stock, right? Save that for the stock. Yep, what, what I, I do, do is uh, if you, uh, you just keep them, uh, in a zip bag, keep them in the freezer. You get enough of them, then you can make a vegetable stock. So you're just going to take the shiitake they're, they're mushrooms. Great, they're great in mushroom soup, and you can uh, puree them. Yeah, absolutely. So we okay. add the mushrooms. Martha pointed out if you if it's starting, the mushrooms will absorb a lot of that uh, the, the butter. So if you, uh, it starts to, these be, look okay. Yeah, you can always add just a little bit more. Now what we're going to do? Come on. Okay, should I just leave that here? Yes. Okay, I will leave that here. Come I don't on. want them to burn. Okay. I have the stock, an egg yolk, and an egg, if you could mix that together. Okay, so please. one egg yolk, yep. two and a half cups of chicken broth, yep. and one egg. Okay. Yep. And then what I have here... I'm glad you use eggs in your in your uh, stuffing. I love eggs and stuffing. Oh, it makes it so light and fluffy yeah, and delicious. Does. Now, I have stale bread. Why? I don't know. We have stale we bread. Don't, we don't know why. I don't know I've why. I've been trying to figure out why would do we use stale bread because then we plump it up again. You know, Martha, I've been thinking the same thing myself. Yeah. Why do we use stale bread? I, it's just, it I was, don't know. It was economy, false economy. You wouldn't economy. eat stale bread, so <laughs> why would you use it? I, I don't know. Should I, I pour know. that in? Yes, we can okay. pour that right in there. Okay, now what we're going to do is to our the same onion, mushroom, yes. chop, we're going to add a little bit of garlic, two teaspoons of garlic, chopped. Mm, cayenne pepper. Cayenne for the heat. A little bit of two tablespoons of chopped sage, and I gotta have, my mom would, she wouldn't, she'd disown me if I didn't use parsley. No, you have some parsley. Right, so you added the liquid. Yes. I am just mixing this in. What about salt and pepper? Oh, you have to add salt Oh yeah, I better, I better do that. I'm coming in. Okay. So like a half a teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of salt, you, you, and you, you taste cheated. it. And what? That was more. No, it wasn't, hardly. <laughs> Stuffing eats salt, don't you agree? It does. It does. You know what? The great key to a great stuffing is what Martha said, the liquid. You have to get that bread soft. Whether you use fresh bread, stale bread, whatever, you got to get it good and soft because that's when it gets really good and puffy right. when you bake it yeah. in the oven. Puffy. So what we're going to do is let that really soak yeah, and it's soaking Take it all Take your time. Up. Look, it's almost gone. The liquid, exactly. The liquid is really absorbing into the bread, and that's what you And that's want. what's really, really important. You so want to have your oven on. Where are you going for Thanksgiving? Right. Wait. Right here. Yes? I'm actually, I'm actually going to our friend, Thomas. Oh, Thomas Keller? Yes, I'm he going. He invited me, too, to see the parade. I know. I'm sorry you're not going to be oh, there. I, but I, you know what? You need the rest. I, no, I want to stay at the farm. No, I, she needs the I, rest. I need the farm. What's, what about this? That's that's brown butter. Yeah, four. That's gonna that we're gonna put that right in here. Okay, good. So the brown butter, you just put a little butter in a little saucepan, turn the heat on, and you'll see it'll just start coming up to temperature. And what it does, it gets mm. this nutty, nutty flavor. That's absolutely delicious, particularly mm. with the sage. Look how beautiful. I know. I just And now you're not gonna put this in the turkey breast because you've already roasted the turkey you know, breast. Some people have been asking me about this, about do you stuff 
your stuffing in the bird. I don't. You don't? Ever? I don't. Oh. I don't. I, I just, I don't know why. Do I, you? Yes, I love it. In the bird? Yeah, I love it. You don't get freaked out about, like, the chemical thing and... What chemical thing? You mean I don't salmon know. salmonella? Oh, no, there hasn't been salmonella <laughs> for years, but... You, it doesn't... No, it doesn't bother me at all. I love it, in fact. In the bird? Yep. Well, I have now, to what, have it. Now, what's, what's your favorite stuffing? Um... This year, let's see. See, it changes every year. It does. It does. I like I like I like old-fashioned bread stuffing, sort I of do like too. this. And I will add I will add things to it. I love the idea of the wild mushrooms. Yes. But I won't do that. Sausage. Um, <laughs> but not but this I won't year. do that. I will not do that. Um, no, I don't put sausage in because we all we. Do you ever do cornbread? Oh, I love cornbread. Oh, I do too. I will too. do white bread and cornbread stuffing. Mixed. And I yeah, and I like to put um, chestnuts in it. I like to you know. Uh, shell my own chestnuts. Yeah. Um, and fruit. 400 I like fruit. degrees for about 25 minutes. In a folks. buttered dish? In a buttered okay. casserole. We're going to put the stuffing now. Mm. I might take I one don't of know. these I... home. Mm. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I want to try this. And then we'll bake this. And as you can see, after it bakes 25 or so minutes. Look how beautiful it look looks. Look at this. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll even get a little bit more brown butter. <laughs> Put it on top and I'll bake it an additional like 15 minutes. Yeah. Just to sort of crisp it up a little bit. But you gotta taste that. Just mm. taste how. It is really, really good. So delicious. Isn't bake that great? it. Bake it with a buttered parchment and yes. foil. Mm, yum. That is so good. Next, uh, Emerald's gonna make a quick and easy side dish to go with this holiday meal. Stay tuned, everybody. Coming up, Martha shows some clever ideas for incorporating your favorite family photos into holiday greeting cards. Stay with us. We're back with the one and only Emerald, and our Thanksgiving dinner is almost done. Now, this is it's a delicious dinner. It's simple. Very simple. But excellent. And yep. that's really what all we care about is excellence. Well, and uh, Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. Yeah. And oh. uh, people are a little intimidated by them. They don't know sort of what to do. This is how they grow. That's they how grow they grow. Stalks. Isn't that really cool? I don't some... know if you've really seen that, but no. they, they yeah. grow like on a stalk like that. And Has, they get... Does everybody know that, who doesn't know that Brussels sprouts grow like this? Oh, look, there are people who do not know. Oh, see, I'm, I grow them, but, but they grow like, they have big leaves, they look like cabbages, but they grow on stalks, look, right. just and like this. And they come right up and they sprout and out. And you just break them off like this. It's the cutest thing. Now, Isn't once that? you do that and you, and you wash them, what you want to do is you want to take the stem and you just sort of want to take the bottom of the stem off like I did right there. Yep. And then if you score them a little bit. With an X. With an X. They cook evenly. They cook evenly. Yeah. So what we're going to do to that before we steam them, I have a steamer set up, which I have some right there, is we're going to make a wonderful uh, little dressing for them uh, when they come out warm made with maple syrup. So Ooh, we're going to use... Yum. Yeah, we're going to use three oh. tablespoons. So should I put these in the steamer? Mm -hmm. See, see this nice little steamer. This is very, very useful gadget uh, to fit inside your pot. You get one of these little expandable steamers. Does everybody have one of these in the audience? Oops, it's hot, so I'm not going to touch it. But this Careful. thing, this flattens out. See how it goes like a flower? It's really great, and it'll fit in many different size pots. So it this spreads out depending on how big your pot is. Yep. So I added three tablespoons of maple syrup, and I also added three tablespoons of, of sherry wine vinegar. That smells so good. A little all. shallot. I'm and then I'm going to have a little bit of Dijon. I'm making this. About two teaspoons. Dijon is mustard, everybody. French mustard. Dijon. Yep. Dijon. Dijon. And then, do you like walnut oil, Martha? I love, just a little. Yeah, yeah. a little goes a long yeah, way. And does. I have a, about a third of a cup, and you can see I'm slowly just whisking those. So that way, it's sort of like making, we're making like a vinaigrette. Cook the asparagus in the steamer. Asparagus? What asparagus? Or the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> or, or maybe it's cauliflower. Or broccoli. Or broccoli. You can steam a lot, you know. <laughs> a little salt and pepper. All right, Martha, this is what I want you to do now. You're going to take the steamed yeah. Brussels sprouts right in there. And dump them in. Yep. OK. Yum. This is, I'm making this. Oh, wait. Because I love maple syrup so much. And then what you do is you do, just roast oh. a little bit of walnuts and you just toss some of them in there. And fresh. Make sure they're fresh. 
Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Martha brings up a point about, mm. you know, when you around the holiday time with all the, the nuts that are in season, mm. pecans, walnuts, right? Where's that little if you have, tiny one? Go ahead. I want a little, want a little tiny if you, one. If you do and you have an abundance of them, you put them in the freezer in a zip bag because they're very perishable. Now, here's our turkey mm. rested 20 minutes. We mm. have our Brussels sprouts. Good? Really good. So we're going to put those right here. Everything Emerald makes tastes good. And that's the most important thing. You know that. Oh, thank you, Mom. Tastes delicious. And so, it looks good. So I want to I wanna show you just how uh, moist. Uh, that's mine. I always take the first slice. Do you for yourself? Absolutely. Yes. Because you won't know how it tastes. Look how juicy that is. Wow. That really is juicy. So I'm going to come down now. This that is a very, very tasty bird. So good. So you're just gonna carve it down mm. like this, folks. We have mm. a few nice slices on the plate. And then a little bit of our, I'll slice one our dressing. You. It's so juicy, my gosh, it's just dripping juice. It's so good. And, and then we're gonna have oh. a few Brussels sprouts. And then some of our pan sauce that we made. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, let's get the okay. other plate. Like that. Ah. That's for you, my friend. So gorgeous. Happy Thanksgiving. And see, it's simple, and if you don't have a lot of time, and you don't have a big oven, and you don't have um, a lot of people coming, exactly. this is Thanksgiving at its best uh, for a few. Emerald, it's always a pleasure to have you. Martha, oh, I want thank gravy. you I want so gravy. much. Oh, you put some on, okay. Um, <laughs> it's really great to have you on the show. For more great side dishes, just visit our website at MarthaStewart.com. There are Happy lots and lots of everybody. Dishes. We'll be right back. Oh, it's so beautiful. Up next, we'll share some of the photos and stories behind this amazing book, American Farmer. learned all sorts of things from the farmers he met while photographing his beautiful book, The American Farmer. This is the book right here. For instance, that manure from cows like these can be used to generate electricity. And that the trick to holding an alligator so it won't bite is to grab it behind the neck and jaw and hold it tight. But he also learned that farmers have a unique dedication, a kindness, and a generosity that he says changed his life. Please welcome photographer Paul Mobley and some of his beautiful subjects, farmers, cousin Don and Alice Henry. So nice to see you. Oh, it is so great. So what inspired you to create this book of uh, portraits of farmers and their families? You know, I have a little cabin in northern Michigan, and I'd been going there for 15 years, going to the same coffee shop with all the locals, just sitting around the table solving the world's problems over a cup of coffee. And that particular day, I saw a face, and I said I had to photograph it. So I asked him if I could come over to his farm and photograph him, and kind of the rest is history. And, uh, and it's, uh, now who's that on the, on the screen? That's Don Schmidt. He's from Michigan, Honor, Michigan, and uh, was one of the very first photos I did for the book. Well, I'd like to say hi to farmer, uh, Cousin Don, I guess we should call you Cousin. Cousin Don, <laughs> yes. And, uh, and I saw you in... in um, uh, Chicago, was it Chicago? In or? Detroit, in, in Detroit. Birmingham, That's Birmingham right. we were there, yeah. Well, yeah. I was signing books, um, and uh, it was so nice to meet you. And uh, who knew that you would be here well, you know, in a couple weeks? That's Isn't it. Great? That's it. You know, this is very nice. Oh, here, it is you know? so great. Now, your shirt looks very familiar. You, well, wore that, you wore that. Was it the same shirt you wore? No, no, no. Now, my daughter says I have 17 of these shirts, but I do have <laughs> one I do have one green one for dating in that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you know? And he's a big flirt, by the way. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. What now. do you farm, Cousin Don? Well, we do maple syrup and... Um, and we do vegetables, tomatoes, uh, eggplant, uh, sweet corn, and then we have uh, 40 pastured lamb also that we do. Okay, and that's for meat. That's for meat yeah. and different and products. And wool or wool, not wool? Yeah, wool. Oh, we do sure. the pillows and we do uh, and we do the wool and do the hides also. And you're uh, you're known locally because everybody wants to come to you at the farmers market. Well, we do. We we have a tendency to take our products down to the farmers market. That's what we do, and right. and so we 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 try to take them. There you go. There's a picture of behind the stand right <laughs> yeah. there. That's where I'm the most comfortable right there with something there. You know, I talked about 700 women 
on a weekend's time, you know, and, that, and I have lots of, lots yeah, of things. It gets you through the week, right? Gets me through the week, and that, yeah. you know, it does, too. Yeah, now, gets you know? through the and week, stuff, so. and, uh, you know, he gets up, I think, I read that you get up at 2, 2 o'clock. Yeah, four, four days what a week. What time do you go to bed? Uh, I like to be 7 o'clock. I love 7 o'clock. Oh, really? Yeah, it's... Uh, when you do you eat dinner? Uh, before 5. Okay, before, before 5. Before 5, you know. And then who, you put the cows and everything to sleep? Well, we, we do that around... That My daughter does the uh, evening chores at 6 o'clock. Her okay. name's Steph, uh, Annie Hobson. Okay. And um, so uh, she does evening chores. I do morning chores and okay. that, you know. So 2 a.m. What can you see in the dark? There's there's nothing. Then when we go... <laughs> and There's nothing, you know what I mean? And so when, when we go down to the farmer's market... We do the open air farmers markets, and so that's, and then they just, they're most of them, they're just like here. They put up their tents, and, and by the time daylight comes, we are, we're, we're in motion then. So I know that, um, uh, I read, in, I think in the book, that know your farmer, know your food. I'm, I'm trying to get more people connected. This is a great opportunity to get people so they would know a farmer, you know. How about you? Do you know a farmer? I know many farmers. I, I about, how about if you... Also know me then as a farmer. I will <laughs> that, you know? know you. And if you Richard, you might... cousin Don Hobson in Clifford, Michigan, yep. and he has a cell phone and a regular phone. There... <laughs> do you have email? Uh, you can email us. Uh, we do have uh, cousindon.com website that we put up oh, for the Ameri with American farmer here. Oh, good. How many uh, acres do you work? Uh, there's 80 acres. I'm the fifth generation fifth? now. Yeah, 1888 is when we started the farm. Oh, fabulous! And how nice that. You're keeping up the tradition of, of the, would you call yourself a medium farmer or a large farmer? Well, a, a, a medium farmer, medium. medium to small maybe on that, where okay. acres are, have changed in that. But we, what we're doing is we're doing more vegetables, and you don't need all that big land to do vegetables. You can do it small, small scale okay. in that, you know. Now, uh, Paul Mobley also photographed a beautiful beekeeper, Alice Weimers from Hondo, Texas. Is that how you say your name, Alice? Weimers. Weimers, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, show that picture again of Alice covered in bees. Now, how did you get the bees to swarm all over you? you are you really naturally sweet like honey? Oh, no, I baited, are you a them. Flower? I baited them with some honey. Oh, you did? <laughs> I've never done anything that risky before. I always work my bees with uh, the bee veil. With the bee veil. Uh, it's prudent to do that. How many hives do you have? Right now, we have only 12. We've been up to as many as 70, but it's always been a sideline for us. Yeah, and the main crops at your farm? Main crops is uh, corn and beef. And the corn is for human consumption or for It's been feed? both. We've uh, grown the corn that's used for masa, for the corn oh, chips. Yeah. And then uh, we also grow How corn. many acres? Uh, we're small farmers. We have 150 acres of that. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, amazing. And the, the bees, Paul, were not in the mood to be photographed that day, or Alice didn't think they were in the mood? No, well, the day before <laughs> the shoot, uh, I called Alice, and she said, you know, my bees will behave, but it has to be sunny. And not and too much warm, wind. Right? They like sunny, warm, no wind. Yeah. Warm, right. still, yeah. sun, and it was none of the above. So, <laughs> and so she said they were going to be angry, and she didn't want to photograph them. And you had to go home. You wouldn't wait for the bees. Well, I went. I had another shoot the next day, oh. and I had opened the window of my hotel, looked outside, and it was rainy and cold. But Alice wanted to be in the book, so Alice, Alice uh, took the bees out. On the day that it was, but that was not so. It so really great. was not a wise thing for a beekeeper to do. But I had a small colony that I used for my observation hive, so I could easily find the queen. Right. Uh, so I got a frame of bees with the queen on it, lots of bees, and we took them to this place that he selected that he wanted to photograph. The, oh, right and, in front of your little greenhouse. Yes, okay. and uh, you see, my husband stood at the side, smoking all you. the time. But that was when we were finished, more or less. But uh, he was trying to get the bees off. Right. You. How many but, stings did you get? Oh, I I didn't count exactly, but I guess a dozen, around a dozen or so. <laughs> Anything for a great shot. And job. she didn't move, right? She she, she did never. She, oh, flinch. It was unbelievable how she oh. never moved a muscle, and I just told her to look at me and bring her chin up. Well, you she, know, bee stings are, if you're not allergic, are very beneficial. Well, I've grown accustomed to bee stings yeah. since I've been working bees for 59 years. I brought you a little present. I brought you a jar of my honey. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. So this is flower honey from Cantato Farm. I just, I just uh, extracted it a couple weeks ago. So I want okay. you to take that home with you. And, oh. And I brought you look some. Look at this. We're training, honey. <laughs> <laughs> ah! All right. Yeah. All right. 
Oh, I want to. I want to have the taste testing. Okay. This is South Texas brush honey. We oh, have a good. lot of tree, native trees, and brush that have good flowers on them. They're good floral uh, nectar sources. And uh, somebody asked me, do you plant crops for your bees? No, not in our How section wonderful. of the country. How wonderful. So it's that all they can na find natural when God sends the rain. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Alice. Thank you, Cousin Don. Thank you very much, Paul. Yeah. Uh, when we come back, we're going to meet a young couple whose family has been farming the same land for nine generations. Stay tuned. back talking with photographer Paul Mobley about his beautiful book, American Farmer. And by the way, this is a great Christmas present for anybody. And it's published by Welcome Books. Um, and it is a, it's a magnificent, magnificent uh, a series of portraits of America's farmers. And two of the farmers that he photographed are Carly Del Signore. Is that how you say it? That is. Okay. And uh, Aaron Bell of Tide Mill Organic Farm along the coast of Maine, which has been farmed by the same family for over 200 years. Please welcome them to the show. It's so nice to have you here. It's really, really great. Now, uh, we have an incredible aerial shot of your farm. There's how many acres? There's 1,600 acres. Can you believe these people are lucky enough to live there? We have and seven miles of shoreland. Oh, it is incredible. Yeah, we've managed to hold on. Our family's managed to hold on to the same piece of land for over 200 years. And that's before. Do you know the Maine Coast Heritage Trust? Yeah, we do. Oh, good. Yep. Oh, good. Have you talked to them? We've sold. We sold the development rights back in 1990, so the farm can't be developed. Oh, so um, but we can have five house sites on the farm that the family members are are living. That in. is wonderful to preserve such a beautiful spot. And uh, when was the land first farmed? Do you have records of that? 1765 is when the first Bell moved there from Scotland. Mm, really. And he started a farmstead. And what did he grow? He probably grew just to things to feed himself. No, that's so not much. 1765 in that in that open truck, is it? No, that was in the <laughs> that was in the 19th century, and that was one of the fourth genera that was the fourth generation uh, driving that truck. Oh, and boy. Um, we've managed to just keep passing it along and, and growing and changing as the markets grow and change. And it's we're looking so forward to another. So you're flexible farmers. Yep. Um, and uh, what's your what are your money crops? How do you live? We're a diversified farm now. We do mixed vegetables, a couple acres of mixed vegetables, pastured poultry. We raise chickens in chicken tractors. We move them to fresh grass every day. Oh, great. We milk cows, rotationally graze um, our dairy herd. We have turkeys and beef. Um, we do a farmhouse rental where we um, have people come to our farm and uh, experience the farming oh, way of nice. life. That's and we nice. make balsam marines. So very diverse. We're trying to make our living farming, and we go from season to season So to let's that. show the photo of your kids, uh, who are ninth generation. There they are mm -hmm. next to that gigantic tractor. Do they all know how to drive? <laughs> yep. The youngest one, Henry, has to sit on a couple uh, telephone books. <laughs> but, but he likes to steer, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> it's and then really... the oldest daughter is Haley. And and uh, middle child is Paige. And, and what cow is that? What's her name? That is Dove. Oh, Henry Dove is, is taking beautiful. Dove out to the pasture. And Henry's uh, famous for getting up with me in the mornings and wanting to come to the barn with me to start milking. And then after milking only about 10 cows, he decides he's done. Of course. And, <laughs> I mean, he has other things to do, yes. Dad. <laughs> yeah. So then he has to go back. But and, he'll know how. He'll know how to do everything. And it's, yep. it's a wonderful way to pass on the traditions and the, and the work. Yeah, uh, it's really great. So, how many people altogether live on that 1,600 acres? Right now, there's 17 family members living on the farm. So it's family. It's, yep. it's it sort of like family. a family commune, <laughs> in a sense. It's, and uh, and uh, this is beautiful. And is that right on the rocks on the sea? Yep. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it is... Paul ma marched us all up there, you know, into this rocky outcrop with the rocky outcrop with the ocean behind us and oh. the sun in our faces. And we have uh, the children were amazing. It probably took 45 minutes to shoot this shot. Yeah. And um, but look how beautiful you all look and healthy <laughs> yes. and nice. It's really extraordinary. Now that the growing season is over, um, what goes on at the farm? Now we're working on um, balsam wreaths. We manage oh. the, the forest land sustainably, just like we manage the fields sustainably. So how many acres of woodland? Out oh, of the about 1,500 acres oh. is forest land. And uh, one of the products that we raise in that forest land, as well as um, lots of wood, firewood, pulpwood, um, timber so wood, the, is we, we make balsam wreaths. You make these beautiful reeds. Yep. Oh, great. And where do you sell them? We sell them all across the country. Anybody oh. can, can buy one. Oh, they can great. go onto our website at um, tidemillorganicfarm.com. 
and find these reeds. We'll ship them right to your door. And we brought this one for you, Martha. Thank you so much. It's going right on my yep. farmhouse door. So it's so much fun to talk to the real people who really grow what we uh, eat, both meat and, and uh, vegetable and fruit. And uh, you'll see so many amazing portraits and learn about so many of America's proud farmers. And Paul, it's such a great book. Thank you very thank much you so for having much. me. And thank you for coming. Yeah. Now, I wanted to invite you all back to my farm for the afternoon. If you want to go, just take a peek. Uh, we have somebody who will drive you up. And it's now, my farm is nothing like your farms. Yeah. And I'm trying. I'm trying. And you can leave me little notes about what I'm doing right and what I'm doing <laughs> wrong. Yeah. And uh, you can tell me how to get my chickens to get feathers again. We have a few that don't have any feathers. They're molting. Yeah, they're molting. <laughs> but they have heat lamps to keep them warm. So, well, I hope everybody will read more about the incredible farmers in this great book. We'll be right back. things that you can do with your favorite photographs these days and the holidays are a perfect time to have lots of fun with them here's what i'm sending out to my friends and family this year as christmas cards i decided not to do the envelope thing i wanted to save postage and i wanted to save paper so i thought a postcard of uh, two of my favorite photos that i took last winter in the snow would be um, a really good thing for saving money. Um, and uh, the postage can be as low as 27 cents a card. Um, the back is beautifully printed, and, uh, and I have a nice little uh, sticker on the back, too, to address for uh, my friends. But these, this is my corn crib talking about farms. That used to be filled with corn for the pigs on the farm. Not yet. It's first, I've fixed it up, and it's ready to go. And this is a beautiful snow-covered drive up at my house in Maine. Uh, and it's, oh, what a beautiful snow we had one day last winter. It was so nice to be there. And, um, and then I loved this photo of the corn crib so much that I used it uh, for these Kodak mailing labels, which are great if you uh, decide to send out larger envelopes. So here is the, um, these are stickers. They peel off. Um, and it's very, very easy uh, to take a photo of your landscape all year round, create stickers like this, and for those uh, packages that you mail, maybe to the troops in um, overseas, maybe to your friends here in the country, um, they'll get a little image on um, every single package of something very personal from you. With Kodak's uh, website, kodakgallery.com slash Martha Stewart, these are very, very easy to make. We designed all these beautiful borders for Kodak. And you select the border first. Uh, then you upload your photo. Uh, finally, you preview your new label. And if you're satisfied, just add it to your shopping cart and place your order. Uh, it's very, very simple to do. And we've tried to make it so that you can um, really create uh, beautiful pieces of art that are also labels and practical labels. And, um, here are some other things that you can do. Here's a pocket photo book. I love this. And um, uh, Tom uh, Tamborello uh, created, went on a trip with his family last year to Europe with his two little girls and Zoe and Delphine. And this is um, a record and beautiful photographs of Zoe and Delphine's trip across Europe with Tom and his wife. Um, and you can choose from eight different cover designs. There's the, all these beautiful colors, the blue with the brown, the green with the brown, the green with the red, very holiday-ish. And um, don't forget the four-legged members of your family. Hosanna Hauser uh, created this gorgeous card for, for um, her Christmas card. And I, I love the shape of it. It folds up. Now, there's her perfect cat. And the message reads, um, hope your holidays are perfect. Love, Hosanna. And a big, fat cat. I want to meet this cat. This is like the greatest looking cat I've ever seen. So you can have a lot of fun with all your photographs. And then uh, these stickers are just elegant ways to seal an envelope. So these are also available on uh, the Kodak website. And these come with all different borders and uh, whatever, whatever color you want. You just peel them off and set them up. Here you can see on a box like that how pretty, instead of the tag, um, and uh, all other kinds of cards and templates that you can use. This is a very popular one with the um, 
charming little faces in the circles and the, and the pretty greeting and inside whatever, there's a lot of choices for the greetings. So um, thank you so much Kodak for allowing us to design these fantastic cards and stickers and postcards and books. You have plenty of options when it comes to choosing what best suits your taste. And that Kodak Gallery website is incredibly user friendly. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. I always say that to people because they really get nervous about making it work, but it really does work. And everyone in our audience, by the way, today is getting a certificate for a free Martha Stewart pocket photo book. So uh, <laughs> let us know how yours turn out. I'm sure you'll be very pleased. We'll be right back. that back by popular demand is our body and soul challenge for five weeks we're going to be giving you different themes to follow such as cleansing your body eating well and fitness and curriculums to keep you on track expect healthy recipes great snack ideas daily tips and interaction with fellow challenge members and top experts from all around the country and uh, you're also going to get access to workshop tools including a calorie burner calculator a target heart rate calculator, and much, much more. Everything you need will be online and at your fingertips, and I'll even be taking the challenge with you. I've decided, I have made up my mind, I am joining the challenge, and uh, sign up today by going to wholeliving.com. The challenge begins, whole, W-H-O-L-E, not H-O-L-E, W-H-O-L-E, and the challenge begins on January 5th, and the benefits will last you your lifetime. So enjoy Thanksgiving now, but come the, and Christmas, but come the new year, be ready for a new, healthier you. I'd like to thank my guests so much, Emerald Lagasse and Paul Mobley, and all the farmers for being here today. It was a great show. On tomorrow's show, acclaimed director Baz Luhrmann is here from the movie Australia, plus another lesson from our cooking school. And uh, all of your last minute Thanksgiving questions answered. Have a great day.